All right, what's up guys? So I keep getting requests all the time on my YouTube videos. Uh, people want to see more of what I do and kind of aircraft maintenance in general. So tonight I finally have time as time is usually my normal constraint of, of showing you guys some of the stuff. But uh, tonight I have time and we've got something here that doesn't normally happen. So I figured also maybe it'd be a good time to show you guys. Um, what we've got here today is a general General Electric CT7-9B engine. So this engine is used in the Saab 340B models. Um, this one in front of me happens to be an A model. It's got CT7-5 Alpha 2s, so slightly less power, but essentially the same engine. Uh, fixed wing aircraft this thing's used on, I believe, is only the Saab and like a, some shorts uh, aircraft, but uh, this engine is more renowned for its uh, turbo shaft um, uh, I guess you could say version uh, as the General Le General Electric T700. This is used in like Black Hawk helicopters, uh, uh, Apaches, and Cobras. But uh, here it is in its Saab 340 form, uh, minus the propeller gearbox, obviously. But uh, anyway, I'll figure I'll show you around. So the history of this particular engine is uh, it was on one of our air aircraft uh, a few weeks ago. And during a routine bore scope, we found uh, first stage compressor turbine had uh, particu particularly one blade that uh, had a bit of foreign object damage and it was just barely past limits. So it was faster to pull the engine, and uh, we had one on the shelf, so we slammed that thing in. And we're just getting components now to, to split this down to change the hot section components to repair it in house. But uh, so hence why it's split in half. Normally this end is is bolted onto the back of here. So quick run through. This is called the power section because this houses the power turbine. So it's a two-stage power turbine uh, system in these CP7s. So this is the very, very back of the engine. Um, looking through here, the jet pipe's gone, but oops, sorry. You can see the power turbine, last stage power turbine right there. So there's two stages of power, of power turbine, two stage gas generator turbine, which I'll show you those in a second. And it's got six stage uh, compressor turbine. So five axial and one centrifugal. But on this guy here, uh, we just have it hanging on this cherry picker out of the way for now because we don't have the proper stand for it just yet. But here is the prop shaft that you don't normally get to see. So of course, the power is being made at the very, very back of this engine, but on a turboprop aircraft just like this, uh, it needs to be sent all the way forward somehow in order to drive the propeller. Unlike what you would see on a PT-6. It's PT-6 is a reverse flow, so it doesn't have such prop shaft per se as, as this one does. So this is a pretty expensive rod right here, and this one just turns nice and nice and smooth and you can't see it in there but this is this is spinning the power turbine so this is the the prop shaft that runs through the whole core of the engine so coming over here this is considered the hot section module of this engine so what we've taped over here is where your normal 12 fuel injectors would go they go right around the whole case um, there's also two igniters that's what go on the end of these one of them goes right here and one on the opposite side. And like I said before, this has also two stage gas generator turbine. Here's the second stage right here. So the one that has the damage is the one that's on, it's in behind this. So we're just waiting on tooling to, to hold this all together for us to pull this wheel and uh, get access to it. But uh, so in the hot section also includes Obviously, on the other end of these fuel nozzles would be the burner can. Um, and the, the hot section would split at this flange right here. So you see all these bunch of bolts here. You take those out and this, this hot section also slides off. Um, power section was the same thing. It, it, it bolted up to this flange right here. It's a pain in the ass getting all those bolts out, but once they're out, they physically just pull apart from each other. 
And uh, once that's off, as you can see, it's not a really big engine. It's it's pretty small. Uh, when you think about it, get pretty close to 2,000 horse out of something this size is, is pretty incredible. Um, I'm getting a little sidetracked. So your centrifugal impeller is housed under here, and as we get narrower and farther forward, we're getting into the obviously the cold section or the compressor section. Uh, this is a bleed bypass tube, uh, low pressure bleed. Up here is the high pressure bleed takeoff uh, for running aircraft uh, environmental systems when you're not when you're on the ground um, not making much power. The Saab 340 anyway uses high pressure bleed to uh, run the ACMs and the, the environmental packs to, to give you cool or warm air. But once you're making enough power, uh, it stops using high pressure bleed because this LP is more than sufficient to provide everything you need. So this is the one that's used mostly in flight to pressurize the airplane and for environmental purposes. Um, as you can see through here, these are um, the actuating rods for the uh, variable uh, guide vanes. So there's a whole section of them and I'll show you how they're operated on the other side. Uh, but while we're over here, just some generalization. There's a lot of stuff missing off this engine right now, so I can't show you everything, but uh, this is the exciter box for both igniters. Um, oil sump is here and oil service is here. It's got this little sight glass and of course it's right empty right now, but normally you would, you would see oil in there. Um, this is where the mount for uh, the PGB comes to. There's one on either end. Uh, what else to show you? Starter generator drive pad. So starter generator is just a big dumb electric motor. Uh, it's used to start the thing and then once it's running you, it generates your DC power for your airplane. So a pretty important component. And it bolts up to this, this line drive in here which is driven from this whole section up here which is called the accessory gear case. This whole case, it splits here, and you can actually take this off. Uh, you can remove your whole accessory section. And on the accessory section, there's also the HMU, or hydromechanical unit. This is kind of like your, or what you would call your, say on an old vehicle, be like a carburetor or your fuel injector. It's a very complicated piece of kit here. I can't even begin to describe you the internal workings of that thing. Um, I've never had to change one yet, and I hope I never do. But uh, <laughs> that's what it does. Anyway, this is a your throttle and your condition levers hook up to this, and this is what governs your engine essentially, along with uh, the computer on these. Um, this is just an exhaust for an inlet particle separator. I'll show you where that is on the front later. Uh, other major components up here: uh, fuel main fuel filter bowl, uh, fuel inlet comes in here. This is the uh, fuel pump, and all your uh, sump oil sump screens are in here so you can uh, check uh, we have regular maintenance intervals the sump screens for foreign matter and we have rejected an engine before that uh, we did find a, a tiny tiny sliver of metal that turned out to be of an alloy that uh, one of the main bearings was made out of so unfortunately we had to yank the engine over that. Uh, what else up here? This is your alternator. So the sole purpose of this thing, again, is driven off the accessory uh, gearbox. It's got its own drive. All this does is it provides us power to the exciter box I showed you earlier to snap your igniters because they take a serious amount of power. Um, uh, what else while we're up here? These harnesses, don't mind them for now. This one. Uh, this goes to the torque gauge that's normally on the back there and the uh, prop speed which is mounted normally on a there's a shroud that mount that bolts to the front of the engine and it mates it to the propeller gearbox which would normally sit right here on this stand so as you can tell normally when it comes out of the airplane it's a, a much more impressive piece of machinery but stripped down it's just a it's just a tiny little engine and there really is not, nothing to it um, so the front of it here, you can see, 
So everything on the outside gets sent into that uh, inlet particle separator that I showed you, uh, and it gets, it gets exhausted overboard or dumped into the exhaust stream. So the theory being it, it separates the heavier particles and dust and sand and, and shit and throws it out outwards. But farther in is the actual, there you can see it there, there's the first stage guide vane right there and then in behind it which you can't really see my flashlight would be the first stage uh, compressor um, that prop shaft rod I showed you earlier see how you can see right through the other side of the engine so that shaft comes right through the core of the whole entire engine and then mates with that inner spline drive and then this bigger outer spline here is for the other prop shaft when it, it goes from here to the propeller gearbox, which would normally sit here. Also, I said I'd show you how the variable uh, guide vanes work. They are run off of this linkage right here, which is connected to, as you can see, the linkage runs to this, this torsion bar which is in turn connected via all these uh, rods to each individual ring of variable guide vanes. But this, this unit right here is called the anti-ice start bleed valve. So it does a whole lot of shit. Um, anti-ice purposes, it actually pipes warm air to what's called the scroll vanes inside there and keeps icing off the, the front of the scroll vanes. Uh, it also assists in engine starting so it actually bypasses a bit of the uh, compressed air as, so picture the compressor spooling up, it bypasses a bit of that air to, to help the starter out because um, it's kind of a, it's hard enough as it is to, to get them going but uh, so it bypasses a bit of the air to, to ease in starting and then once everything's running it, it closes so that uh, you will make power obviously. Um, so hence the term anti-ice start bleed valve. Uh, what else on here for you? Normally, bolted right in here, this area is what's called a DECU. Uh, that stands for a digital engine control unit. And the uh, reason we had to borrow that off this engine is um, the engine we put on wing to replace this one. Uh, about three days later, the airplane um, had to come back, they had uh, faulty torque indications. Uh, in flight, just cruising along, their torque all of a sudden went down to zero. Um, obviously the engine didn't quit or nothing, it just it was an indication. But uh, all of a sudden it started working and we fought that for a few days, changed a bunch of components. One of them being this, this harness. This goes with a torque gauge and also we borrowed a, a torque sensor which is this unit right here. Uh, we swapped, swapped those parts out, did a bunch of other troubleshooting and, and it just intermittently over, after a few days would come back. And uh, finally the last thing to do was change the computer because all these, all these harnesses and all the electronics on these things, they go through that computer anyway. So we swapped computers with the other side and sure, sure enough it moved. So it was kind of lucky that we ha still had this one uh, attached to this one. We knew this one was good because it just it just came off wing so uh, we uh, recertified that one, threw it on and uh, it fixed it. But uh, pretty expensive fix, whatever. What can, uh, what can you do? You kind of need it. But uh, anyway, that's a very shortened version. I, again, I apologize. There's, there's not, it's not a complete engine as it's sitting right now. Uh, maybe next time we have one on the floor with the uh, propeller gearbox and also all the exhausts and the jet pipe and everything all hooked up, harnesses all done. Uh, maybe I could take another video for you guys then uh, as it looks a little more impressive uh, then than it does now. But anyway, hopefully some of you enjoyed it and uh, maybe learned a thing or two and uh, anything else, just let me know. And uh, yeah, take care guys. Bye.